हेलो एवरीवन मैं सर डॉक्टर प्रतीक गर्ग सो नाउ द टॉपिक वी आर डिस्कसिंग इज ओरल कार्सिनोमा वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वी आर नॉट गोइंग इनटू द डिटेल्स बट वी विल डिस्कस द इंपॉर्टेंट एग्जामिनेशन पॉइंट्स सो व्हाट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स द फर्स्टली द मोस्ट कॉमन कैंसर इन मेल्स इन इंडिया सो इन इंडियन मेल पॉपुलेशन व्हाट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कैंसर इट इज द कैंसर ऑफ ओरल कैविटी So what in the oral cavity? Oral cavity consists of gingival buccal sulcus. Oral cavity consists of tongue, the tooth. Okay. So the most common cancer in males in India is cancer of oral cavity. The lung cancer being second. So lung cancer is the second most common cancer. The first most common cancer is the cancer of oral cavity. And what is the most common site? in india the most common site is gingival buccal sulcus so in india the most common carcinoma of oral cavity is gingival buccal sulcus or we can say bucco alveolar sulcus whereas in the rest of the world the most common site is carcinoma of tongue so rest of the world the most common site is carcinoma of the tongue whereas in india the most common site is gingival buccal sulcus that is between the uh, uh, gingiva gingiva and the buccal mucosa why the most common site is gingival buccal sulcus you have seen the patients with that tobacco chewing habits so what they do they will have the tobacco and they will just stick that tobacco in between this sulcus that is in between the gums and the buccal mucosa they will keep their tobacco here and slowly and slowly they are chewing that so because of the chronic irritation at that particular part in india the gingival buccal sulcus carcinoma is the most common variety okay so in india the gingival buccal sulcus in the oral cavity is the most common site whereas in the rest of the world the carcinoma of the tongue is the most common site and what is the most common histopathology the most common histopathology is squamous cell carcinoma so most common type of oral cancer carcinoma is squamous cell carcinoma if we talk about complete head and neck so in complete head and neck the most common type of cancer is squamous cell carcinoma complete head and neck the most common variety is squamous cell carcinoma if we talk about the oral cavity if we talk about the nasopharynx in the nasopharynx in the elderly group again the most common major pharyngeal carcinoma is squamous cell carcinoma the most common type of pharyngeal carcinoma again it is squamous cell carcinoma so complete head and neck carcinomas are mainly of squamous cell carcinoma which is the most common variety now we talk about verrucous carcinoma see verrucous carcinoma is an sub type of squamous cell carcinoma whereas suppose this is a buccal mucosa so in verrucous carcinoma there occurs some warty growth and this warty growth can be easily detachable okay so verrucous carcinoma is an sub variant of squamous cell carcinoma where there is a warty or fungatic growth arising and suppose if you are removing only that fungatic growth so if we do the histopath of that fungatic growth so we can see in histopath only the hyperkeratosis and acanthosis that means we can find out that it is a verrucous carcinoma so diagnose to diagnose the verrucous pars carcinoma properly we need to take a deep biopsy so we need to take a deep biopsy that means the overlying fungating growth but and plus the deep tissue if we take the complete biopsy then on see then only the histopathology will show a verrucous carcinoma if you take suppose only this upper part of the uh, verrucous growth then it will show only the hyperkeratosis and acanthosis and thus the sub type of this uh, squamous cell carcinoma that is verrucous cell carcinoma can be missed so i hope this much is clear the most common variety uh, the most common carcinoma is carcinoma oral cavity in india the most common site is gingival buccal sulcus rest of the world the most common site is carcinoma of the tongue <clears throat> the verrucous carcinoma is a sub type of squamous cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma is a type which is the most common type of the carcinoma now among lip cancer see uh, okay tell me <clears throat> the upper lip and the lower lip so what is the sensory supply so upper lip we have discussed it is supplied by the maxillary nerve and the lower lip it is supplied by the mandibular division third division 
of fifth now this is second division that is the maxillary just out of context but just to revise okay so among the lip cancer 90% of the cancer they are occurring in the lower lip because all the tobacco we are just keeping underneath the lower lip okay so in the lip cancer the 98% of the carcinoma they are occurring in the lower lip and again the variety is squamous cell carcinoma most common carcinoma of upper lip or the nasal dorsum is bcc so upper lip or nose dorsum the most common variety is basal cell carcinoma basal cell carcinoma it is also known as rodent ulcer why the rodent ulcer because this is a carcinoma like we have seen the rodents or the mouse how they make burrow so they will suppose this is the upside line so they will make a burrow so this why this is called as rodent ulcer because when of this carcinoma grow so superficial margins may be normal but it can grow inside that so we have to always while doing the surgery of the basal cell carcinoma we take a 1 cm margin approximate apart from the lesion so we have to remove apart from the lesion around surrounding 1 cm margin because it's an rodent type of ulcer it proceed like a, in a rodent manner so upper lip or the dorsum the nose the most common variety of the carcinoma is basal cell carcinoma where rest of the head and neck is it is squamous cell carcinoma what is the most common carcinoma of the oropharynx so in oropharynx the most common carcinoma is tonsil we all know the tonsil is a part of the oropharynx situated between anterior and posterior pillar so the oropharynx most common carcinoma is carcinoma of tonsil and it has been seen that human papilloma virus number 16 and 18 are commonly seen in head and neck carcinomas so human papilloma virus it is also present in cervical carcinoma so again in head and neck carcinoma human papilloma uh, virus association has been commonly seen now the carcinoma of lips the lip carcinoma they has the best prognosis we all know the central part of the lower lip it is draining into submental lymph node some mental lymph node whereas the upper lip and the rest of the lower lip this these are draining into some mandibular lymph node so these lips cancer these have the best prognosis because we can resect the lip and we can just get rid of these cancers and we along with the lips we can remove the some mandibular some mental lymph nodes okay so carcinoma of lips has best prognosis what is the worst prognosis suppose the cancer has spread into the base of oral cavity or floor of mouth so if it happens to goes in the floor of the mouth then lot of lymph nodes come into the picture the vascular supply is complex so the carcinoma of floor of mouth has worst prognosis every point is important by examination point of view so try to memorize every point so if the cancer is spreading into the floor of the mouth it is having worse prognosis even the cancer of the tonsils they are also having worse prognosis because in the tonsils the area the <clears throat> the cancer may beneath the tonsil it may spread to the parapharyngeal space and then uh, complete in the neck and going to the different different structure can can even go into the mediastinum through the parapharyngeal space so even the tonsillar carcinoma of the carcinoma of the floor of the mouth they are having the worst prognosis lip cancer heart palate cancer they are having the least lymphatic metastasis because the lips are draining only into the submental or submandibular lymph nodes and the heart palate is it is also having the least lymph node supply so lip and heart palate cancer these are having the least lymphatic metastasis that's why these cancers are uh, better to treat okay highest lymphatic metastasis are seen in carcinoma of tongue followed by carcinoma of floor of mouth tongue we all know different different supply of the tongue tongue suppose this is my tongue so this is anterior to third then comes the posterior like this so every area of the tongue is having different nerve supply different lymphatic drainage anterior part is draining into the submandibular lymph nodes 
the posterior part is draining onto the deep cervical lymph node jugular uh, chain lymph nodes so the lymph any cancer of the lymph they will having they, they will have the lot of lymphatic metastasis that's why it is having the highest lymphatic metastasis along with the floor of the mouth now let's i have a basic idea about t and m staging so let's talk about the t okay so tis is carcinoma in c2 t1 t2 how to differentiate see in t1 the tumor size is less than 2 cm or depth is less than 5 mm so t1 is the lesion where the tumor size is less than 2 cm or depth is less than 5 mm t2 here the size is, is between 2 to 4 cm or depth is in between 5 to 10 mm i'm just simplifying all the points have been written but i'm just simplifying them so in t2 lesion since it's two so the size of lesion in the oral cavity carcinoma is between the 2 to 4 cm and depth is between the 5 to 10 mm if it's t3 then size become greater than 4 mm and depth become greater than 10 mm okay so how t1 tis is carcinoma in c2 t1 is the uh, uh, the uh, width or we can say the diameter is less than 2 cm and depth is less than 5 mm if it's t2 the size is between 2 to 4 cm and depth is between 5 to 10 mm if it's t3 then size is greater than 4 4 cm and depth is greater than 10 mm if it's t4 it is divided into t4a and t4b so t4 category there is generally distance or we can say the local or surrounding tissue is also involved so in t4 lesion on the side suppose there is a carcinoma of the tongue so it will involve either the floor of the mouth it will involve the gingiva buccal sulcus it will involve the skin of face so that's how but t4a is involving the surrounding structure t4b it can go to distinct structure like the carcinoma of the oral cavity is extending into the skull base it is uh, occupying the uh, mediastinum going to the mediastinum so t4a t4a is local structure surrounding or neighborhood structure and t4b is distant structure just to simplify okay now talk about n lymph node metastasis so n0 is no no lymph node lymph node metastasis n1 is less than 3 it is less than 3 less than 3 cm in greatest dimension n2 is in between 3 to 6 cm so we have talked about t1 so t1 is less than 2 then comes t2 which is between 2 to 4 then comes t3 t3 is greater than 4 okay so that's how n1 is less than 3 n2 is between 3 to 6 and n3 is greater than 6 so n2 is again divided into a b c so a is on the one side only one side the single lymph node is there which is between 3 to 6 cm and two b is multiple lymph node over the same side so same side but multiple two b multiple n2 is opposite side size is between 3 to 6 cm so what an idea <laughs> n1 is less than 3 cm n2 is between 3 to 6 and n2 is further divided to abc and 2a means same side and single same side and 2a is same side and single and 2b is same side but multiple and 2c is opposite side and single can be multiple whatever and 3 is greater than 6 cm then comes the mo no metastasis m1 is distance metastasis so these are certain pictures like this is a carcinoma of gingival buccal sulcus we can see the gingiva and this is the buccal sulcus so cancer of gingiva buccal sulcus size seems to be larger than 3 cm you know see complete half of one side of the Uh, gingiva buccal sulcus is occupied so maybe more than 3 to 6 cm this is a cancer of tongue the base of tongue you can see the exophytic mass and it may involve the floor of the oral cavity so if it is involve the floor of the oral cavity then it may be 
T4A. If the size is greater than 4 cm, so it looked like greater than 4 cm, that means it is maybe 3, 3 or T4. If, and it, if it involving the surrounding structure, then it may be T4A. Here you can see gingival buccal sulcus size seems to be more than 4 cm. I can see it is more than 4 cm. So mostly it is T3 or T4. If, T4 if it is involving the surrounding local structure.